Guys, coach will open with a comment. If you will raise your hands and keep them up for me for a minute so I can get you. How are we doing today, guys? Good. Well, obviously, today was the first day in pads, which uh, I think this acclimation period is very, very good uh, for player safety uh, and for players to work their way back into um, getting in shape to play football. To go two days in shorts and helmets, two days in shoulder pads, and then put full pads on is probably a good thing. We got chased inside today because of the weather. Um, but uh, I think all in all, uh, we've had a lot of heavy install, uh, like we always do these first five days. Uh, we've got a lot of young players out there, especially on defense, that uh, it's been a real challenge for them probably to keep up um, with knowing what to do, uh, how to do it, why it's important to do it that way. Uh, but now as we go back, we kind of start all over, um, so to speak, uh, in this next practice tomorrow to try to emphasize some things so that they'll get another opportunity to learn, you know, again. You know, it's been a big thing for us to try to get the kind of effort, the kind of toughness, the kind of discipline that we need. Um, you know, we've had some great speakers here, you know, these first three or four days of camp. Um, you know, some, some of the real quotes that I remember is, why is it so hard to give 100% when it's 100% up to you? You know, that one really kind of resonate, resonated with me. And, um, you know, then we had a speaker that said, you know, sometimes your talent can be your nemesis because if you think you're really good at something, maybe you don't have to grind, maybe you don't have to think you have to work as hard. But we're trying to get the young players who are talented, you know, to have the kind of effort, toughness, discipline to execute that they need so that they have an opportunity to be able to learn and contribute, which in a lot of cases we could usually really use a lot of these young guys if we can get them in a position where they can have a role in the team. Obviously what we're looking for on Saturday in the scrimmage will be a lot about who can go out there and have the maturity and focus, uh, mental toughness, mental discipline to uh, be able to stick with um, good play, bad play, play the next play, um, keep their poise, um, and that goes a long way in telling you whether a guy is emotionally you know, really ready to play. So uh, physical talent is one thing, but being emotionally mature enough to be able to do it with consistency, you know, is another thing that I think has to be evaluated. So all in all, I'm pleased with what we've been able to accomplish, you know, in these first five days, not really satisfied. I don't think you ever are. Um, you know, I love this part of what we do. I love the process um, of going through teaching and trying to bring along them players and um, try to help develop, you know, the kind of team chemistry that we need to have a chance to be successful. You know, Stefan Wynn did get injured yesterday in practice. Uh, it's not a surgical type injury, uh, but it is a ligament strain that will probably keep him out for uh, a little bit of time. So, um, you know, we hate to lose anybody. We need all the help we can get and all the depth we can, especially with big people, especially in the front seven. We'll start with Cecil right here in the middle. Um, Coach, at media days on Saturday, Jalen had some comments in which he seemed frustrated um, about some things. Have you? I know you speak to the players all the time, but have you had a chance to talk to him specifically about that? And, uh, yeah, and, and you know, my my comments were, you know, every player has a right to express what he feels and what he thinks. Um, and I think he has every right to do that with every coach or anybody in the organization that he has relationships with, um, which you know we certainly do quite often with all players at all positions. Uh, but you know, look, this this is probably a lot more important to people outside this organization than it is to people inside. I don't think this has any effect on our team. I've talked to a lot of the team leaders. Uh, you know, the players are focused on what they need to do. Uh, the rhetoric will not have anything to do with who's the quarterback. Uh, that will obviously be decided on the field uh, by how people execute, how they do their job. Same parameters that we talked about before in terms of who wins the team. Uh, and winning a team goes along with execution, leadership, uh, players having confidence and belief, uh, and that's not going to change. So I don't really have any more to say about it than that. Uh, I don't think it's a uh, uh, it's anything that has affected our team uh, one way or the other. Okay. We'll go. 
Yeah, front, uh, right here with Christian. How has uh, Chicken Carter progressed, especially this last half season? Uh, Shaheen is a guy that's really a bright guy, really knows the system really well, um, can make a contribution in star or money, um, has played some corner for us uh, in the past. So it's kind of a jack of all trades right now, and um, I think that we need for guys like Shaheen Carter who has shown and demonstrated leadership ability in the secondary to be able to go out there and execute consistently and do their job, and he's made a lot of progress in this offseason. Come back on this side with Charlie. Just want to ask you about Josh Jacobs and his progress, and if he's a full go after his injury in the spring. Yeah, he's absolutely 100%. He's had a really good you know, first five days of camp, uh, very explosive, very quick, very fast. Uh, doesn't seem to have any issues. Uh, he's been able to take all the reps. Uh, done extremely well. Come back over here on the left with Michael. Yeah, you, you've got ESPN cameras following you around everywhere. Uh, how do you, you know, ignore that? Does it ever get to your mind that you know that these guys are around following you? No, I don't really ignore it, uh, which may be an issue because there may be some bleeps in there every now and then that um, I'm counting on them to utilize their technical skills to make sure that we don't say anything we shouldn't say, which we don't do very often. You know, we're usually very positive, trying to teach the players in a positive way. Um, but, you know, things like lack of effort, um, guys not focused, not paying attention, um, that, that mental energy and mental toughness to be able to sustain things, I think is something that sometimes uh, probably frustrates me as much as anything as a coach. But when it comes to the result that you get, it's more about how did you do it, how can we fix it, how can we help you get better. Um, I think there's a lot of things about our program that, um, you know, maybe brought to light that may be a real positive in terms of, you know, we have great people here, we have great players, and we have great support staff, and, you know, it's, it's indicated by, you know, the personal development programs that we have, the progress that we make with our players as people. Um, the great academic history of academic success that we have um, and the people that we have helping our players and a system that we have that helps our players uh, develop the kind of habits that help them be successful and um, you know we have a career development program you know we have a great nutrition program we have a great medical staff um, we've got a good bunch of coaches who do a really good job at teaching and developing players which is you know sort of been the history around here in terms of the number of guys that have had great careers here and had success here and the number of guys that get the opportunity to play at the next level. So uh, there's a lot of good things about that and um, we don't mind that um, sometimes it gets brought to light. The co on the right with Ben. I wasn't sure if you're able to comment on the commitment you got earlier today, uh, but if you could, just how do you expect him to help and maybe when you might be here? Uh, I don't think I am. That, that's, you know, I, I get orders, right. you know, when I come to work for certain people, I get orders when I got home from certain people, you know. We'll go back up front here with Tony. You've got players like uh, Christian Miller said that he enjoys this time of, of football, is that, at this time of camp, is that encouraging to hear from a veteran that, uh, that you know, they're actually enjoying beyond even the heat? Yeah, you know, I, I, I really love it when I hear a player say something like that. And, you know, Christian Miller has always been one of the hardest working, you know, best teammates, best guys on the team. But, you know, sometimes the question gets asked, do you love the game or do you love the lifestyle? You know, do you really love the game or do you love all the attention that the game gives you because you're playing in Alabama and, you know, you got lots of girls on your Twitter and all that. Or do you, do you love the game? Do you love the play? I mean, do you like to go out and practice and try to get better? And uh, are you excited about uh, the things that you need to do to play winning football and the challenges that the team has relative to the competition that you have to compete against every day in practice as well as what we're going to compete against when we go to the game? So, um, you know, I'd love to hear that players, you know, love to, to practice and they love the game and uh, it's not just about the lifestyle and the Twitter and an opportunity to wear somebody's t-shirt and all that I mean and um, it's about playing it's about playing well it's about feeling good about the self-gratification you get from um, 
doing something extremely well on a consistent basis. Coach, we'll finish up right here with Alex. Given all the players that have left, uh, have gone on the NFL and stuff recently, it seems like there's a lot of youth, uh, one to less than two years' experience, you know, among your first two, two teams. Just what are the challenges of going into this right now? Seeing so much youth that you have to kind of bring them along quicker than normal. Well, I, I think that um, we have some talented players that are young players that made contribution last year. Uh, and I think those guys are going to be really good players. And I think the experience they gained last year is going to be very helpful to them. Probably what's more concerning to me is we have young players who weren't in the program or young players who didn't play a year ago uh, that don't have experience, uh, that may get called to duty um, and have an opportunity to make a contribution. And do those players really know you know, what it takes to compete on this level, to prepare for a game, to get ready to go play. When the game starts, how are they going to respond to that? So um, that's probably, and we have quite a bit of that, probably more of that on defense than on offense. Uh, we don't really have anybody or very many players in the two deep on offense that didn't play, you know, quite a bit last year, whether they were starters or not. Uh, we have quite a few players in the two deep on defense who didn't play a lot last year. Um, and those guys are really going to have to develop. Um, they have a significant role, which is going to be important to the depth of the team in a lot of ways. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you.